Hey guys, this is El Indy Making and my name is Jesse. Today I will be reviewing the Canon 55mm f1.4 lens. So this lens was made in 2007. Canon has made an updated version of this lens at all. Uh, the price is at $350. I bought it for $250 from eBay. Uh, it came with the box, it came with everything and a year of warranty still. So I am happy for this buy. I mean there are the competitors too like Sigma, Tamron uh, to keep in mind besides this lens. But this lens is pretty good. I mean, the build quality is is plastic, but it doesn't feel like cheap plastic. It feels like pretty good plastic. The weight is not too light, not too heavy. Now, the focus ring is pretty good. I've read and I've seen reviews that with the time, the focus ring can get kind of stiffish, uh, considering that this lens is used. Now, I don't know how much the owner used it or how long that he had it for, but the focus ring is pretty smooth, I believe. And finally, what I believe that makes it really popular is the... Um, f-stop opening of 1.4 letting in a lot of light making it a fast lens and giving you a pretty amazing depth of field so those are some of the specs and details about this lens now let's get into actually reviewing it now keep in mind that I am not a photographer I will not be reviewing this lens from a really photographer point of view but more from a filmmaker point of view since I am a filmmaker um, studying film at the University of Texas at Austin so most of my review will be coming from video that I took. Uh, there will be some pictures just for the sharpness, but other than that, I'll really be reviewing the video, uh, and I'll be using a body of a Canon 7D to try the lens. So let's get to it. So this video is the uh, at, a, at an opening of 1.4 with a 200 ISO, uh, very overexposed as you can tell. Then I w went ahead and changed it to. Uh, f-stop of 11 which is slightly better and then finally at 22 uh, opening still 200 ISO now what I mainly want to test about this lens is the fact that it has no image stabilization which sucks if you're a filmmaker because if you're gonna shoot if you're gonna be shooting handheld uh, your image is gonna be pretty shaky uh, kind of giving you like a wiggle effect as you can tell from this footage that I'm showing you uh, so yeah I mean it's, it's gonna suck so what I wanted to test is if using a shoulder mount w would it make a difference. So here is a clip uh, shot handheld, stationary shot. Uh, as you can tell, it's, it's very, it's kind of unstable. And here is the clip again with the shoulder mount, which it's a little better, but uh, not just the same with it as having a stabilization. And then here is another clip of me using the uh the shoulder mount again uh pretty stable unless you get uh heavy bumps then you can the image is gonna get pretty messy and then here's one just handheld uh which is a little bit more shakier and then here's just this the shot of handheld uh trying to be as stable as it could it's not that bad but i mean it it I had to be really uh unmoving and now I'm gonna go ahead and briefly move through some pictures that I took. Now I have no brick wall. I know people typically use a brick wall to see how sharp a lens is. So I use this, uh, just this board that I found. Uh, this one is at 1.4 ISO 200. Uh, from the close up, as you can see, it's uh, not, not very sharp at all in the middle. Uh, then we move on to f-stop four. It's a, it's a little sharper in the middle definitely very more sharp uh, corners unsharp uh, not really that sharp and then finally f f stop of eight uh, the image is darker but it seems to be more in focus more sharp for sure and then the edges uh, they're they're sharp on their own but not that much and then finally here are some random pictures that I just took along the way testing out the focus on this thing. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I am very impressed by the uh, depth of field, the bulka, some people call it. It's, it's really delicious, I, I love it. <laughs> so to conclude, I love this lens. I love the depth of field. I am just a sucker for depth of field. I think anybody is really. Uh, again, keep in mind that I am a filmmaker, not a photographer. So I reviewed this lens mainly for filmmakers I guess um, it has no image stabilization so that's the downside but I mean other than that the image quality is great 
I think you can get some pretty nice shots out of this lens so I can't wait to use it in my next uh, short film that I'm planning um, and also keep in mind that I really don't have a lot of experience with uh, expensive lenses or really a lot of lenses uh, it hasn't been too long that I've been trying to get myself into the lens game if you want to say uh, this is my second lens that I bought the other one that I have is a uh, Tokina wide angle which I'll probably be reviewing sometime soon so yeah I mean happy with the buy happy with the lens amazing can't wait to use it I hope you enjoyed this video thank you subscribe and watch out for more videos filmmaking tips and more this is Jesse L Indie Making thank you for watching Thank <laughs> you.